many bloggers are questioning the validity of these figures. Um, so can you just clarify for us whether or not 17% is a realistic forecast for Eritrea? And then secondly, the estimates used have looked at the combined GDP of Eritrea and Ethiopia. And yet we know historically, uh, these are two countries that didn't get on. They were once a united country, but now they're two separate entities. So how have these figures been devised? Uh, thank you very much. Uh, I think with respect to the figures, uh, I, although we have problems with data collection in Africa, uh, the source of the data is World Bank and United Nations. And so they have uh, such a tremendous experience in doing statistics all over the world. And with this experience, they do calculate the numbers uh, throughout world economies and producing development statistics. So these are numbers that we can trust because of the source. The, trust, the source is trustworthy and so they, they can be relied upon to estimate economic growth for economies. All right, now uh, go ahead. In terms of the relationship between Eritrea yeah. and Ethiopia, Yes, in terms of the relationship, uh, I think uh, it would be very good and wonderful if we can be able to have these two countries go along together because then they would produce uh, the biggest economy, fastest growing economy in the world. But historically, then of course we have this uh, problem that uh, they have not been getting along very well. Uh, but it's uh, it's some uncertain, such an uncertainty that it is not clear whether they can get along and whether the good things happening in both of the economies may not be disrupted by mm. the, they are getting along that is not uh, very good. Now, Dr. But we can hope, we, we can hope that um, something will happen because it seems that uh, uh, economies in Africa are getting to understand mm. that uh, uh, peace brings development right. or you cannot do development without peace exactly. and therefore uh, stopping conflict, focusing on development work, focusing right. on doing the good things that you are good at is able to produce right. uh, good economy and even development for, for, their, for their citizens. Dr. Mboya, this 17% that's forecast for Eritrea over the next few years, what's going to drive that? We're told Eritrea's got a burgeoning mining sector and the agricultural economy's been doing well. Uh, yes, um, but I, uh, although the agricultural economy has been doing well, I think Eritrea has been embracing uh, some... Uh, uh, good aspects of uh, economic management and it has resources true in fact uh, the driving force of the economy is likely to come from their natural resources uh, they are reputed to have uh, gold and mining sector that is uh, beginning to open up and they also have uh, gas uh, they also have uh, natural resources like fish uh, and in addition, it's uh, also embracing uh, other aspects that drive economies like ICT. They are beginning to use mm -hmm. ICT. And so it's more like a market-driven economy more than agricultural-based. I'm curious about that statement. It's more like a market-driven economy. Critics of Eritrea say it's a command economy that is... Uh, decided by the political imperatives of the ruling party. How do you respond to that? Um, I think my response to this uh, is that uh, given where they are coming from, uh, I think it, it's, uh, it's not, uh, uh, an, uh, it's not uh, something that is strange that they have a command economy just maybe because they needed such a leader uh, to be able to break up from Ethiopia. But I think also even such kind of leaders can show good economic management. Mm. And so what is important I think is uh, if this kind of leaders and the party that leads uh, uh, the economy demonstrates good governance and uh, good management of the resources 
and uh, equity in the way they, they do things, they can still be doing very well. Um, we've also read about um, the coming on stream, that's not quite the word, of a cement factory that was built and that that should contribute significantly to some of the um, infrastructure and manufacturing work that's going to happen. Critics again say, why are we getting excited about one factory uh, in Eritrea? This economy is coming off a low base. Should we be careful about getting too excited about it becoming the fastest growing economy? Um, uh, I, I, I think uh, it's true. It, it may not be uh, such a thing to celebrate about one factory. Uh, but uh, it, it, I think it signifies the beginning of uh, things to happen. Uh, although also on the other hand we can say that uh, infrastructure is a key in driving development. Mm. Uh, and so I think this will be a good sign in terms of building the infrastructure mm. and other business infrastructural facilities. All so, right. It, it, it's a good thing. All right, we've got our guest host here and I'd like to pose a few questions to him. A command economy, and for some analysts, that's something to be concerned about. Yet yeah. one would argue China is or was a command economy yeah. and to some extent India as well. And look at their performance. No, exactly. But I think we need to always reflect that the Chinese and, and Indian success was by the, those command economies, the government's withdrawing and releasing the energy of those those countries. So the same goes with er Eritrea. One gold mine and one factory is not going to cut it. It's a very low base. And if it is a command economy, if, the, if there's a trend towards liberalizing and opening, uh, to opening it up and allowing uh, markets to actually function, mm -hmm. you'll find that that growth can actually start sustaining. But the moment you start to have a command economy and uh, what, what happens in a, com in a market economy, money capital gets allocated to the best ideas, but in a command economy, capital gets allocated to the biggest bribe. All right, and that's the biggest, the biggest problem, is that you start to get inefficient allocation of capital and your ability to fund growth going forward mm -hmm. also is um, limited. It also then means inward investment mm -hmm. right, is uh, determined by what is allowed by the politics and you don't get a proper right. uh, um, cross-pollination and, and so if you start to see it opening up the growth right. will attract additional in, um, investment and you will get something that sustains right. itself. Eritrea is set to surpass Qatar which has been consistently the fastest growing economy over the last two years and that's predicated on huge infrastructure spending and the fact that uh, Qatar has both oil and gas. Yeah. Comparatively speaking, how well, do you rate this, this, this latest Yeah, well, Eritrea's got no infrastructure. It's, it's starting off uh, virtually zero base. So you'll find as the growth picks up, just people being able, you know, agriculture, one of the biggest killers of agriculture can be war, okay, besides policy issues. And, and the fact that they've just stopped fighting a war with Ethiopia firstly mm -hmm. frees up resources that were being dragged and it mm -hmm. also means that people can say, okay, you can plough the field and at least you know, n not have marauding mm -hmm. uh, uh, people coming through mm -hmm. there eating what, 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 what they haven't sown. So that immediately, d just people getting back to their normal routines, yeah. you generate economic growth just because of that. Yeah. And so a lot of that will be happening in, Ethi in, in Eritrea and also Ethiopia. And that's why just that the fact that they're not fighting a war generates economic growth. And then, of course, um, you know, what happens beyond that? Mm -hmm. And that's, that's the question is, do you actually get mm -hmm. that beyond or does it just stay then as right. it has been in centuries? These are ancient civilizations. A final comment from you, Dr. Mboya. Um, some of the major investment that's come through, certainly the cement factory that we referred to was built by the Chinese and that seems to be a look east trend for many uh, African economies. Where else is the investment coming from in Eritrea? Uh, uh, I, I think other investments could be expected to come uh, with respect to uh, things like uh, ICT, and uh, 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 fishering, fisheries, and also with respect to developing other mining projects. 
and so like uh, they are said to have gas. Uh, so all these resources, the way they are managed to develop the, uh, the, the economy, I think that is going to be uh, quite useful. And also the other fact is that we have uh, some of these people having or re being recipients of remittances. Uh, diaspora people bringing in money and also focusing on uh, the local economy, wherever they are. Mm. This is also something that we are seeing that it's opening small economies even to come up like Eritrea.